Welcome to Gravitational Potential and Projectiles. The one thing I want everyone to remember before we start this lesson is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. And if we're looking at a closed system, say a marble rolling on a frictionless track, if the marble is gaining speed, that means the kinetic energy is going up but therefore some other type of energy must be going down. So if the marble track looks like this, and the marble starts slow here, but by the time it's here, it's really moving quickly, yes, kinetic energy is obviously going up, but since it's dropping, the gravitational potential energy is going down. That's the basis for this question I'm about to describe. So I'll set it up. We have a shot put launched from a height of 2 meters at a speed of 6 meters per second and it reaches a max height here actually that's a little high, I'll draw it somewhere there it reaches a max height of 3.15 meters per second Sorry, 3.15 metres, my units are a bit off today. The question we want answered is what is the speed, so we'll say speed, of the shot put at this point here? First of all, when the shot put is at this height, it has both gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. And if we were to add these together, we'd get some total energy of the shot put. If energy can neither be created nor destroyed, the total energy of the shot put at this instant should be the same as the total energy of the shot put at this instant here. So this should be the same as this. And the total energy, just as over here, uh, it is given by the gravitational potential plus the kinetic. Over here, it will also be given by the gravitational potential and the kinetic. So let's set out to work these things out. This is actually quite similar to questions where the momentum hasn't changed, but in this case, we're going to say the total energy hasn't changed. The shot put, we need a mass for the shot put. Uh, let's say it is... 7 kilograms. Mass equals 7 kilograms. So what is the gravitational potential energy? Well, gravitational potential energy is basically the energy, uh, the kinetic energy at which the object... No. If you drop the object from some point with a starting speed of zero, by the time it reached the ground, it would have a certain amount of kinetic energy. The gravitational potential energy is equal to that amount. So at this height here, 2 meters, Gravitational potential is mgh, 7 times 10 times 2, which is equal to 70 times 2, or 140 joules. Its kinetic energy is given by a half mv squared, so that's a half times 7 times 6 squared, which comes to, I think that's 126, 0.5 times... 0.5 times 7 times 6 squared, 126 joules. So at this instant here, it has 140 joules worth of gravitational potential, which is just given by its height and weight, and it has 126 joules worth of kinetic energy. The total energy, therefore, is 140 plus 126. That is equal to 266 joules worth of energy. The total energy at this instant, since this is a closed system, there's no other sources of energy coming in, nothing else is doing work except gravity, the total energy over here is going to equal 266 joules. We also know, since gravitational potential energy is given by height 
and weight what the gravitational potential and energy is here because we have the weight, the weight hasn't changed, m equals 7 kilograms, and we have the height given here. So gravitational potential, mgh, 7 times 10 times 3.15, which is equal to 7 times 10 times 220.5 joules. Now remember the total energy is given by the gravitational potential and the kinetic added together. So if we have 266 is equal to 220.5 plus kinetic energy, taking 220.5 from both sides gives us a kinetic energy of 45.5 joules. And that kinetic energy must be equal to a half times the mass times the, we say velocity here, this is actually the speed. When you're working out kinetic energy, you, you always use the speed. And since this is the max height and the object is traveling in that direction there, the horizontal velocity is the speed. So let's work out the speed. 45.5 is equal to a half m, which is 7, times v squared. So 2 times 45.5 divided by 7. Take the square root of that. That gives us v. Which is equal to the square root of 13, which is equal to 3.61 meters per second. Let's see if that answer is sensible. If you throw something at 6 meters a second from this height, as it gets higher you would expect it to get slower since this uh, velocity here is made up of horizontal and vertical components and you expect gravity to remove that vertical component, yeah you would expect the speed at the top to be somewhat lower than the speed of release. So I like this answer there. The final part of this question that I want to solve, we'll shrink this down, scale down, move up here, is I want to find the final landing speed of that object there. If anyone has gone through the projectile motion videos, we used to find the landing speed by finding the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity and then using Pythagoras to get that horizontal landing speed. We're going to use a different method now. When that shot put lands on the ground, do a green line there, Oops. the gravitational potential energy will be equal to zero because now it's zero meters off the ground. And the total energy will not have changed. So total energy is equal to 266 joules. That total energy is still equal to kinetic energy plus gravitational potential. Sorry, I'll just... Kinetic energy here was 45.5. But recognize, if we don't have any gravitational potential energy, that total energy, which we've been carrying through this entire question, is going to be equal to the kinetic energy. So 266 is equal to EK, which is equal to a half, uh, 7 times V squared. So 2 times 266 over 7 equals V squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we get V is equal to the square root of 2 times 266 divided by 7. That's the square root of 76, or 8.8. 72 meters per second. This is an easier method of finding the landing speed than the projectile motion method we were using uh, earlier. Because there's a very clear relationship between speed and kinetic energy which we can exploit to get the speed very quickly without having to deal with those pesky vectors. I hope this helped you understand gravitational potential and projectiles. Some people who are very uh, practiced at these questions might find it a little bit unnecessary to find the total energy. 
Because what you can do is find the change in gravitational potential energy there. So the change in gravitational potential is equal to mg times the change in height. So the change in height here is pl uh, pretty clearly equal to 1.15 meters. That's the difference between 3.15 and 2. So change in gravitational potential is m, so 7 times 10 times 1.15, which is equal to 80.5 joules. And this is the energy, since we've moved up in the gravitational, uh, gravitational field, we had to spend 80.5 joules of our kinetic energy in order to get there. So if I take 80.5 from 126, I get 45.5, which is the kinetic energy we have up here. There are shortcuts to doing these questions. As long as you understand the idea of paying energy to move up in height and getting energy back when you move down in height, uh, you should be okay.